Hello there everybody, how's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff here on FlossTube. I am coming to you on this Saturday, October 29th, 2022 with an update video. I am back within a couple of weeks to give you an update on my stitching. Before we get into everything, I would just like to say welcome to both uh, returning and also new viewers. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope that you're getting some stitching in. I have a bunch of things to go over. Uh, we are going to talk about cross stitch and books and knitting today. We're going to cover it all because I have a little bit of all three of those things. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. I, I, I like it when I have the full, uh, my full repertoire, if you will, <laughs> to, to share with you. Uh, so there's not going to be a whole lot of preamble here. I'm just going to jump right in and we're going to start talking about, about cross stitch projects. And we're going to start with finish. Because when last we spoke, I was working on Kindred Spirits by The Primitive Needle. And uh, I picked this up at a D-Stash a couple of years ago, and then Stitching May and I did a start along last October, actually one year ago today. That's kind of cool. Uh, we started this one year ago today. And so I was working on this. Uh, and I think I, I think at the time I was planning on working on this and then I was going to have a new start. The long story short is that none of that happened. Um, the, the new start had to wait a little while. So I was working on this and I worked on it to the finish, to the finish. And like I said in my last video, I knew it was going to stitch up quick and I was correct. Um, once I got through, um, I've been calling them pennies, uh, whatever these circle motifs are. Once I got through those, it was, it was pretty much zooming, uh, for the rest of it. And I love this a whole lot. I love it a whole lot. So the fabric is a 40 count Newcastle linen in Stratus from Color and Cotton. It is a beautiful kind of washed denim -y blue color. Uh, and I use none of the called for threads. It calls for three, three silks, uh, Belsois silks. And I, I didn't use any of them. I pulled some threads from Stash. I added in some things. Uh, if you want to know the colors that I use, I will list them in the description box below. Um, I did end up deciding on a dark purple for the, for the lettering. It is called Witch's Brew by Color and Cotton. I also left in the misspelling of kindred because the long story short is that uh, I was planning on leaving it like that and then I hemmed and hawed about it and I thought I might change it and then I finished stitching kindred and I went well I guess <laughs> like I was almost on autopilot um, and so I guess I decided to just stitch it as charted. So I think it's really cute. I really love it. Super great timing for this finish. Got a dark October finish, and I love it. Oh, I love it, love it, love it. Much fun. Um, I, I'm not sure what I'm doing with my chart yet, um, so please don't ask for it. Love it. So that is finish number 10. Finish number 10. Actually, that was, that was significant because I finished this on October 18th, which would have been Thor's 10th birthday. So I was thinking about my bubba <laughs> quite a bit. Um, and the day that I finished number 10. I even found um, a Thor hair in the, in the back of this while I was working on it that day. So I was like, oh, okay, he came by for a visit. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that is Kindred Spirits, all done. Up next, I decided to work on the next piece that I thought I might try to finish this month. <laughs> <laughs> ah, delusional. This one is a little bit delusional. Uh, but that currently lives in this project bag. This is a Mamalee project bag. And in here is my Witches of Salem. And this cover picture is terrible. It's, it's uh, black and white and it doesn't even really show all of it. There's still some stuff down here uh, hidden in the decorative stuff that she put on here. But whatever that's kind of what it looks like and that needle miter isn't that so cool i got that from the imperfectly perfect stitcher but i don't know if she's doing them anymore i don't know if she's doing needle miters anymore but 
Anyway, so I pulled this out to work on and I decided to work my way top down to finish out some of the small things that I hadn't done yet and then to just just work my way down kind of as evenly as I can. So I needed to put in these lines underneath the C and the A. These little stars needed to go in. Um, I had some of the house not quite done yet. And these fiddly little leaves floating around the tree. Forgive my parked threads. You know, the madness to my method. And also I started work on this center vine. And then it became time to start working on the names. And at first I was working on the names without having it recharted. Um, I found a 12 stitch high font on Lord Libidon. Um, that website is a really great resource if you're looking for uh, a text that is a certain number of stitches tall, it's great. Um, but I, I can't, I wasn't able to chart it. Um, and so I was having to look through the alphabet and figure out the spacing on my own and whatnot. And it was taking a long time. So the first day that I worked on this, I spent some time, spent some time, uh, playing with stitch fiddle. Um, and I, I ended up purchasing, um, like a one year access to stitch fiddle to have all of the bells and whistles with stitch fiddle. Um, and I ended up charting it out. So now all I have to do is stitch and count according to my chart and it's much, much easier. I'm a little sad that my chart isn't pattern keeper compatible, but that's okay. <laughs> I will, I'll manage with a paper chart with a printed out one. So, uh, so that's where I got to with Witches of Salem. These letters take forever. I think I was lamenting on Instagram while I was working on this. They take forever. Um, because it's one over one and it takes a lot of stitches. <laughs> uh, so it's timely, but I think it's worth it. I like this font significantly better than I do the, the charted one. Um, just for, for my aesthetic. So, so that's where I'm at. I have what, seven names down and 13 to go, I think. 13 to go. So quite a bit left to do. This is not going to be a finish this month. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to put some big time into it in November to try to get it done. So there is that. Uh, this is on a 28 count Maron linen. It's not a, a Zweigart base. Um, it was dyed by Extra Designs in the colorway Gold Sand. And I am using like none of the called for colors. I have added in things. I have chosen chosen different things. I made a lot of changes to this, um, just to just to suit my fancy. It comes with a very limited color palette, and so I was able to sort of beef it up and add some things that I really like. So that is my Witches of Salem. So I worked on Witches of Salem for a few days and then it was finally time for my new start. And I think I was able to, I, I don't remember if we started this on Friday or Saturday now, but I'm thinking it was Friday. Anyway, <laughs> Sammy J Stitches and I started a project together. Um, in all of the years of our friendship, we have very few start alongs. <laughs> and so uh, since she and I are both really into this series, um, I'm really into it because of her. <laughs> um, we decided to start this one together. So this now lives in this project bag. This is a vintage Owl Lady project bag. Um, this is where Kindred Spirits used to live, but I thought it was pretty perfect. Gosh, I love this bag. Good bag. And inside is my, uh, this is Celebrate Halloween by Madame Chantilly, Forgive the Glare. And that needle minder is some new stash. Uh, I picked that up from Top Knot Stitcher. You'll see a couple more of those actually coming up here. Uh, so anyway, this is Celebrate Halloween by Madame Chantilly. And I was so geeked to start this. 
and I got on virtual stitchers for the first time in months. Um, and I got to spend some time with friends stitching. So this is on a 40 count Newcastle Linen Inspector by Color and Cotton. This was the September fabric of the month. I was really trying to scour the internet to see if I could snag a piece of Stratus because I think this would look really, really good on Stratus, but wasn't able to get one here in time and that's okay. So here is where I got to and why is that looking spotty? It's a little spotty. It's not that bad though. Um, so I got, I got started and I was immediately hooked, like just really, really digging this really into it. I did change some colors, so I swapped out 3371 for black. I'm using Anchor Black. I needed to add in a purple. Um, it, it calls for 3041, and so there is a little bit of dusty purple kind of towards the bottom of the design. But I wanted some more purple, so that Witch's Brew I actually added in. And these little florally bits from the floral picks were supposed to be white, but I decided to make them purple. Uh, Sammy changed the pumpkin stems to green, and I think I'm gonna follow suit because they are charted in white for these, these orange pumpkins here. So uh, yeah, I think I'm going to, to swap that out. Um, and I'm toying with the idea of maybe stitching one of these pumpkins like with with a turquoise with a teal or a turquoise um, because I recently learned about the teal pumpkin project which is that if you are giving out candy to trick-or-treaters that if you put a teal pumpkin it lets trick-or-treaters know that you have non food options so for kids who have allergies or dietary things you have non-food items like spider rings and fun stuff like that. I really like the concept of that. Uh, and so I think I might I might make this this spotted pumpkin here. I might make it teal and black. Just just to, to get the teal pumpkin project into this, because I, I love that as a concept. So um, so that is where I got to. Um, I worked on this for two days, maybe two and a half days because I just couldn't stop. Love it, love it a whole lot. Oh, this is so cute. And I was worried about how light this fabric is with the, with the white showing up, but I think it looks okay. I think it looks pretty good. So, I don't know if I'm gonna get back to this this year. Uh, I might bring it next week on retreat since I'm gonna be hanging with Sammy. Maybe we'll both bring it, I don't know. We'll see. Um, we will see. So that is new start number one. When I finished working on Celebrate Halloween last Sunday, uh, last Sunday morning, I was like, I would really like to spend the rest of this day on this project, but what I really need to do is keep going with the other projects. Um, I have some things that I would like to finish this year, <laughs> as you might know, um, and so I've got to get back to that. So I had Sunday and Monday, and then I had plans for Tuesday. Uh, so I had a day and a half, really, to devote to this. And I thought that this next project, I could get my section complete in that day and a half. So that is a project that lives in this project bag here. And this is by Jasmine's Custom Bags. This is the project bag that I used for my Fancy Lady Focus. And this year it is Bluebeard's Princess Mirabella. This is my oldest Mirabilia, it's my oldest fancy lady, and I have broken this chart up into 12 equal parts. I've said this several times this year, uh, but I broke it up into 12 equal parts and I'm working on it a section a month to see the finish in December, and I am so close. So I'm actually working on this today, this morning. Um, so you can imagine, I didn't get my goal accomplished in that day and a half, not even close. I got hardly any stitching in that day and a half. This is where I am up to currently. And so you can see where my October section ends. Forgive all the parked threads, it's just how, it's just, it's just how I do things. 
Um, but yeah, so I'm working on this beautiful lady. This is a 32 count Belfast in NYX from Under the Sea Fabrics. And I'll move the hair clip that everybody thinks is a spider. Um, because I am beading and everything as I go down, I have this, um, this is quilt batting that I have rolled up into the frame to, uh, just to protect those beads because the tension on this frame is fantastic, but it's a little dangerous for beads. So that is where I am up to. I don't think I'm going to get a whole lot more work on this today, if any at all. Uh, so I, I know this is going to bleed into planes a little bit, but I think this is going to come back out. I think this is going to be how I finish out the month of October. I really wanted to work on Witches of Salem some more, um, especially with Halloween being on Monday, but it's just, it's just not going to happen. Um, I've got to get my section done for this month. I don't have a ton left to do. I have the other seahorse down to this section, and I have to connect the tail. Um, it connects into, into where her feet would be, so to speak. Maybe not her feet, her knees. So that is Bluebeard's Princess Mirabella. As I said on Tuesday, I had plans. Uh, I had a planned new start for Tuesday. So here's new start number two. And this lives in this project bag. <laughs> uh, it's, yes, it's that bright. Um, this is from the Brass Button. Um, Kid scientists, I, I love this project bag. And in here, is my project that I started on Tuesday for the Owl Always Love You, Sal. I'll put that on the screen here. Um, some of y'all expressed some interest in stitching an owl with me on, um, on Tuesday. And so I posted as, as in where I could on social media um, for Owl Always Love You, Sal. Um, Sal stands for Start Along and stitch along so at any point from here until the end of time you can hashtag I will always love you Sal <laughs> it wasn't just for that one day so anyway so I was starting Little Wings by uh, Heaven Earth Designs artwork by Jeremiah Kettner so excited to start this I just can't even tell you I was so excited I'm gonna insert a picture here I posted uh, to my Instagram stories, um, a picture of my kiddo laying next to the fabric for this project. Um, I saw somebody do that on the, on the Hade Facebook group, and I thought that was really cute to kind of show the progression of the project and the kid at the same time. <laughs> so, um, so my starting point, she was 21 months old, a little bit, a little bit past 21 months. And so we'll, I'll either take pictures at her birthdays or the project's birthdays. I haven't yet decided. So I ended up working on this on Tuesday, Wednesday, and even a little bit on Thursday because I forgot to switch my projects uh, before Thursday morning, <laughs> which always happens to me. If the project, when I get up, is already set up on my frame, then I just stitch on it with my coffee in the morning. So I got a pretty decent start, and I am so disappointed in how this is showing up. Gosh, I hate full coverage on this camera. It looks so bad. And it looks so good in person. Yeah, that looks terrible. It's real. that's, that's better. That's probably as good as we're gonna get. That's pretty much what it looks like. It's just background, so it doesn't even really matter. Um, it doesn't even, it doesn't matter at all. Uh, I'm just so disappointed. I watch a bunch of full coverage stitchers and their stitching looks so good on camera. And I'm like, why can't I have that? <laughs> anyway, so this is where I got to. I got a ton of progress in in those two and a half days of stitching. Um, so the first day I made it across the top of page one. And then the second day I did a ton of stitching. I think it, it added up to like a thousand stitches that day. The thing is that this is background, there aren't a ton of colors, and I'm so geeked about it that I, it just zoomed. It just stitched up so fast. I didn't do anything extraordinary to accomplish that. I stitched when I normally stitch. <laughs> it just zoomed. 
and I was really enjoying it and I wanted to keep going to the page finish. Um, so it is, it is a lot of background for a long time before you get to, you get to the creature. However, um, this swirly right here for the flower is like right here. It's, it kind of curves around right there. So I'm really going to get into something. Um, certainly a lot faster than a lot of my hades that I have started in, in recent years. I'm gonna get into something pretty quick. Like, it's not the it's not the creature itself. I'm not gonna see that for a long time with the way that I stitch. But anyway, speaking of the way that I stitch, this is a 25 count easy grid Lugana from Zweigart. I stitch one over one full cross. So I've been asked a couple of times if I'm going to use the Royal Rose method for stitching full coverage, and the long story short is, no, probably not. The concept of Royal Rose is that you stitch two blocks at a time and you work your way either as far as across the whole thing or as far as you can in your field of view. Um, so if you're working in a Q-snap and you can only get two, two and a half pages in your field of view, then you work your way all the way across that. And then you go back to the beginning and work your way across, etc. And the long story short is that for me, I think I've said that a couple times now, uh, for me, I am too motivated by page finishes. Do I have the ability to work my way all the way across? Yes, because I stitch in this big frame and so I have the full width available to me. And I like seeing people use Royal Rose when they're stitching all the way across. I, I, I just like the way that that looks. But it's just not for me. I am entirely too motivated by page finishes. <laughs> I I live for page finishes, to be totally honest. These projects are humongous and they take forever. They take a very long time. And so that little gratification of getting a page finish, I thrive on that and I need it. So I can't, I can't work my way all the way across and like never see a page finish. Um, I get it that by the time you make your way all the way down, you get a bunch of page finishes in a row. I understand that. Uh, I just... I just need page finishes sooner than that, more frequently. So anyway, <laughs> that was a, a longer tangent than I meant it to be. Um, I like my diagonals and I'm going to continue in that way. So that's where I got to with Little Wings. I have shown this bit of background for a long time. One thing I did want to mention, uh, two things actually, I surpassed 1%, uh, so that's pretty cool. The other thing I wanted to mention was that I am now three for three with Kettner Hade pieces, starting with purple. Both Little Wings and Personal Sunshine started with DMC 550, and this moment started with 3837, I think. I looked that up, just in case you're wondering, I did look that up. Um, so the very first stitch was purple. And I that is only significant to me because my favorite color is purple, and so... Uh, this this artist that I seem to stitch a lot of using my favorite color it just feels very serendipitous it feels like it, it fits together anyway that's just the way my brain works that was exciting and I cannot wait to get back to this I need to find some time to be able to do so this year and I don't know if there's I don't know if there is time so we'll see we will see as I said, I'm working on Bluebeard's Princess Mirabella today, uh, and that's what I started working on after finishing my 1% on Little Wings. So we're all caught up with what I have worked on in these last two weeks. So let's kind of segue into plans a little bit. I told you that I'm working on Bluebeard's Princess this morning if I get any more stitching time this morning, and it's 11.48, so I'm doubting that there's going to be any time for that. Um, because this afternoon and this evening, I'm going to have a new start. <laughs> I told you in the title, mostly new starts. So, I wasn't planning on this new start. I wasn't planning to have another new start this month. However, Colette the Highway Stitcher and Krista, uh, they share a birthday. And they have a stitch along every year where they start something on their birthdays and then try to finish it within the within the next year before their birthday. 
and that is today. So happy birthday to the both of you. So I, I, I've kind of always loved what they start for this birthday. And, but I haven't been able to participate. And then Colette announced recently what the, what the project is for this, for this year. And it's PDF available. <laughs> and I love it. I was considering it for my World Cross Stitch Day. Um, I was considering starting two things for World Cross Stitch Day. Sailor's Delight by Uncanny Carrie. Um, and that is still, that is still in my head to start this year. <laughs> um, and also, um, Kathy Barrick Busy Hands, because I thought a needlework related piece would be great to start for World Cross Stitch Day. So this is My Day Complete by Kathy Barrick, and you can get this from her Etsy shop in a PDF download. I know that Busy Hands doesn't doesn't go into Pattern Keeper. I haven't tried this one, but I'm guessing probably not. But you can download the PDF. And I cannot count my day complete until needle, thread, and fabric meet. I love this chart. It's so pretty. It is so pretty. So I'm gonna start it. Um, I'm, I'm geeked. I'm gonna start it. Um, so I have, I'm gonna use the DMCs. I have all but one here. I'm missing my dark brown on here, but that's okay. And I pulled fabric this morning. This is 40 count eggnog from Color and Cotton. I have so many neutrals from the neutral club. Uh, so lots to choose from and I'm gonna go with eggnog. They used, it says that this is vintage maple sugar. So I'm guessing that the way that this picture was taken, it doesn't, it doesn't quite look like that in real life. Um, not to mention my threads look deeper than these do. That pale green you see, that's the color used for the tree. So the exposure for the picture um, is not quite the same as what it what it actually looks like in, in, in real stitches. So anyway, so I'm geeked. I'm gonna start this this evening. Um, my husband has board game night and so I'm gonna stitch until the wee hours probably. <laughs> Might hop on virtual stitchers to hang with them. So that is my plan for today. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to work on this tomorrow. Um, I might. I might work on it for maybe half the day tomorrow and then go back to Bluebeard's Princess because I have to get my section done before the end of the month. So that is that. Plans for November. I have a pile of projects that I would like to finish in November. Um, so I think I didn't bring any of this to show you, but I think that this month I'm going to focus on Witches of Salem, Give Thanks by the Drawn Thread, Dumbo by Mandarinx Designs, and um, the piece with which I ruffled everybody's feathers, uh, American Eagle by Blackbird Designs. I'm going to try to finish those four things here in, in November. Um, next weekend, I am headed to... Ohio. I am headed to Yellow Springs, Ohio for the Stitching in the Springs retreat and I am so excited. So excited. Uh, my attendance was tenuous for a little bit um, but now uh, plans are being ironed out and I fly in on Friday and I am I'm geeked. I'm, I'm excited to get to spend some time with some stitchy friends. A couple of those ladies attended my Zoom baby shower but I haven't met them in real life yet. <laughs> Like, <laughs> it's time. It's it's high time and I'm just, I'm so geeked. Cannot wait to uh, just be, be with Stitchers. So that's going to be really exciting. Um, I am potentially taking a new start. <laughs> you know, I spent all of, la most of last video talking about all of these things I'm going to finish, but I keep talking about new starts. So we'll see. Uh... And then I'm also going to spend some time this month on, on personal sunshine because I would like to get another page finish on personal sunshine. I know I have some other pieces that I need to get to the page finish on. Alice in a Dolly Dream, Quick Stitch Day and Night. Those ones are speaking loud to me. Uh, but I want to work on personal sunshine. So that's going to be one that I focus on here in, in November. 
I want to talk very briefly about 2023 plans uh, because I have some plans, but I don't have it. Nothing is very concrete. So I have in years past, I have sort of curated a smaller list of my whips to focus on throughout the year. And that has worked pretty successfully for me uh, for, for a number of years. However, there's one aspect of that that bothers me, and that is that I have projects that I haven't worked on in four years. We are at the end of 2022, and there are, some, there are a lot of pieces that I haven't worked on since 2018, which is wild. I mean, that's, that's pretty wild. I also have a number of projects that I have worked on for fewer than five days total since starting them. And I, I that also doesn't sit well with me. I start a bunch of really big projects. And so it's, it's, it's crazy to me. It's nonsensical to me that, um, that I have projects where I've put in a day, maybe two. Um, that's not okay. That doesn't sit well. So I'm going to work on every single project that I have next year. I'm going to work on every single one. And the way in which I'm going to accomplish that is that I'm going to put all of my projects into WIPCO boards. So I'm going to have upwards of potentially four WIPCO boards. Without my day complete, without the without any additional starts. If you take my current whip list and you add in all of the things that I told you last time I was going to start this year, and if I finished all of the things I told you I was going to finish last video, then I would be at a magical 72. I would be at a magical 72 whips, which is perfect for three whip go boards because with 24 open spaces, um, I could I could very comfortably, very easily fill up three WIPCO boards. Because I am starting my day complete and potentially an extra new start uh, next weekend, I don't know if I don't know if I'm going to be able to maintain. I don't know if I'm going to hit 72 that magical 72 by the end of the year. So we'll see. We'll see. And I mean, that's dependent on me finishing everything that I mentioned last month or last video. And Don Marie pointed out something really great. She was like, you know, you only have two months left, right? <laughs> yes. Now, yeah, that that is definitely the clock is is blaring. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to hit 72. So I might have upwards of four whip go boards or I'm going to have to find another way to be able to work on on everything. Okay, so what are my goals for these WIPCO boards? Standard goal is three days. Not a ton of progress, but something into every single one of these projects. There is an absolute possibility that I could put three days into some of these projects and decide that I'm not moving forward with them. But because I haven't worked on them, I, I haven't been able to really make that decision. So three days into everything, that's the baseline. I have a number of projects that have only been worked on once, one day since starting them. And that list is not insignificant. So the goal for those pieces is four days. I want to work on those four days to get them up to the five day minimum. <laughs> um, so that's gonna be the goal for those pieces. So we're starting baseline is three days, four days for those things that have only been worked on one day since, since the beginning. Lilo's Studio Spring Quaker comes to mind, or Move Forward in Love by Modern Folk Embroidery. I think there are some older things that, that fall under that. Certainly Mania from 2020 uh, is a lot like that. So I have a number of things that I can work on for multiple days, for four days. My 2016 projects are going to get seven days because I'm still feeling this urge to get the old stuff out, to get it done, to get it to get it off my plate. Seven days is not going to finish a lot of that, but um, just to put in those seven days means that I am progressing those pieces quite a lot further than the standard, if you will. 
2017s will get five days. So my WIPCO boards are going to be full of year-end goals based on number of days that I want to work on those things. The exception to that is full coverage. So if I find myself at the end of the year with more than 72 projects, then what I might do is pull the full coverages out and spread them out evenly throughout the year accordingly. And then just use my WIPCO boards for my non-full coverage pieces. I may do that. So I thought about trying to finish Personal Sunshine next year. If I do that, then nothing else is gonna get much progress. It's just it's just not gonna happen. I'm gonna have to be solely focused on Personal Sunshine and I, I'm still not quite ready for that. I'm not quite ready for focusing on just one of my full coverage pieces because I love them all. And this tour of page finishes, so to speak, has sort of reminded me of that love for these for these other projects. So I can't spend the whole year only working on that one. Here's what I've decided. My oldest full coverage, and we're going to try it out in 2023 and go from there. So my oldest full coverage is going to get page finishes equal to the number of years since I started it. So for example, in case that was about as clear as mud, Personal Sunshine, I started in 2016, so that project turned seven in 2023. Therefore, that project is going to get seven pages next year. Does that make sense? Okay. My second oldest full coverage piece is going to get half that rounded down. So, in case that was as clear as mud, uh, April by Anna Dittman, that I started in 2016 as well, just later in the year. So that piece is going to get seven divided by two, which is three rounded down. So it's going to get three pages next year. So my older ones are still getting more traction than my newer ones, but, um, but not quite to the extent of the oldest. Finishing seven pages on Personal Sunshine will get me pretty close to the finish in 2024. It will be, it will be fairly easy to get that done in 2024. Seven pages is going to add up to about 50,000 stitches, which is significant. Um, that's, that's, <laughs> that's not nothing. I'm going to have to spend some even time on that each month in order to see that goal accomplished. So, so there's that. For everything newer than my second oldest, I have kind of decided that I'm going to put in 1300 stitches times the number of years since I started it. So for instance, in case that was as clear as mud, Snow Castle, I started in 2017 at the tail end of 2017, but nonetheless 2017. So in 2023, that project will turn six. Six times 1300 is 7800, I think. I think that's, that's what I mathed out to. So a page, basically. Um, so I will stitch a page into Snow Castle next year. For anything in the new year that hasn't yet reached at least a page finish, I'm looking at you, Little Wings, um, that will, I will work on it up to the page finish, up to the page finish. Um, and the same goes for any full coverage new starts after that point. Um, I will try to get at least the page finish. Maybe I'll maybe I'll put it here the breakdown of, of how this might work. Just in case you're curious, um, I would like to continue working on these pieces more evenly, um, at least more consistently than letting them sit for a year or two years or four. Um, so that's that's kind of my plan there. Uh, I am going to do the the thing next year where I pick a chart and I break it up into 12 equal parts and uh, to see the finish by the end of the year and I have decided that that's going to be Glory of Autumn by Dimensions, my oldest whip, my last holdout from 2015. Uh, so that's going to be that plan. That's how I'm going to get that accomplished. Um, and I may, I may do the same thing with uh, Touching the Autumn Sky but break that up into six parts and see if I can't finish that by summer because that was supposed to be my goal for this year and I have yet to work on it. So anyway, 
So there's that. That's the plan. So each month I will have probably six WIPCO draws, but with a goal of maximum seven days. Um, I think that that is achievable. Hopefully, and knock on wood and all of the things, um, but hopefully I don't have all 2016s called in the same, in the same month because seven times six is 42. Yeah, there's no month with 42 days on it. <laughs> so hopefully that doesn't become the case. Um, but that's going to be, that's going to be my WIPCO plan, uh, for, for 2023. And I've been listening to people sort of start to muse about 2023 plans, and that has been tremendous help for me, helping me figure out my plans. Um, all of this is subject to change. None of it is written in stone, um, but I'm pretty happy with it, with the way that I have it right now. But life and stuff, things change. So anyway, let's get off of that that was supposed to be a very quick talk. And let's start talking about some new stash because I have some things that I have purchased. I have toyed with the idea of not talking about stash anymore, but I love showing this stuff. I just, I, I, y'all get giddy about these projects and then new stitch alongs pop up and everything. So anyway, so we'll just show it. Um, so we have here, I picked this up in D stash. This is Needlework Press's Margaret Croft sampler and it's that floral motif for me and the peacock. Not so much the cherubs. The border is pretty cool. This is fun. I really like this. Uh, so, anyway. Um, the, it, I was just reading on the back that there's not a whole lot of clues. Um, for instance, Margaret didn't date her sampler, but based on some of the motifs, they're figuring it's probably mid 19th century. Anyway, I love, I love this. Very cool. I meant to show you this with little wings. Um, I was just on Instagram one night a couple weeks ago and Abby Top Knot Stitcher advertised some needle minders that she had and I ran. <laughs> as fast as my fingers could fly across the keyboard to pick up this needle minder. Isn't she adorable? Oh, I love her. Um, so I thought that was pretty perfect for Little Wings, so I snatched her up. Um, just so cute. So, excellent timing, Abby. <laughs> and while I was there, I picked up another needle minder that I'll show you here in a second. Um, but while I was at Top Knot, because you can't, three needle minders can't travel alone. That's a long way from California. Um, I also picked up Winter Hill by Rosewood Manor. I love this whole series all of the seasonal ones um, but this one this one spoke to me the loudest probably the cardinals there's cardinals all over the place rosewood manor mm -mm -mm. this is huge and beautiful and i might put this in the plans for next year we'll see you know i, I was setting this down and i thought wouldn't that be a really cool extraordinarily tall drum. It's the banding that, that made me think of that. And then if you stitch the, oh, that might be the thing. I would have to take out this border up here because that wouldn't, that wouldn't jive. Oh, <laughs> that might be the thing. Winter Hill drum. It would be so tall. <laughs> Let's see. How, how, what is the stitch count on this? Tell me, tell me I'm being nuts. It's 258 stitches tall. So that would be a huge drum. I just, I thought, all of a sudden, I thought that, that might be cool. This will take forever to stitch, so I can, once I start this, I can think about that for a lot of years. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, next I placed an order with Sammy J Stitches at Tiny Hummingbird Stitchery. I will link her Facebook group below. That's primarily where she operates. She puts up some cool stuff and cottage garden samplings. <sighs> yeah, this is adorable. So, so cute. The bat and the owl and the pumpkins. This is amazing. I also picked up 
Autumn Cloche by Hello from Liz Matthews. And uh, this is the other needle minder that I got from Top Knot. I thought that was pretty perfect for this design. And this is something that I might take with me as my new start for next week. I have Fabric Bold. Um, that is 40 count rain washed from Coloring Cotton. That might be kind of fun to start uh, next, next weekend. It's still autumn, even though I was looking at the forecast and currently it's saying we're going to be at around 70 <laughs> all weekend. Um, up next is something that arrived this week. Um, this was in a D stash. This is a uh, picture of this plus 40 count sterling. And I also, this was like probably two, three weeks ago that mine arrived, but I just wanted to share it because it's so beautiful. A sampler for all seasons by the Scarlet House. Some people are starting to get theirs finished and so you may be able to get this one second hand before too long. Um, this was an exclusive through the Homespun Needlework Facebook group. You have to join that group. You have to be a member of that group in order to have access to these exclusives. Um, and this this exclusive is over. You can't you can't get this anymore. Um, I don't know. I'm assuming that this will be available. That this will be released within the next year, but I don't know. Because the one that I got last year, Marianne Aldred, Needlework Press still hasn't released um, that to the general public. And that was over a year ago. So um, I, I can't say for certain that this will be available in a year. But I'm assuming that it, that it would be. Because normally that's kind of the limit on the exclusivity thing. Right? I am so articulate, y'all. <laughs> Anyway, love this. Uh, and it came with 40 count Steinbeck and I did the cotton threads. Uh, and love, love, gorge. So that is it for the stash. I'm sure I have some other things, but um, that was kind of what has collected here at the end of my desk. Um, so let's go ahead and switch gears. And we are going to talk about knitting next. Um, so if you were just here for the stitching, then thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next one. If you're here to hear about a, a little bit about knitting and a little bit, bit about books, settle in. So I have done some knitting in recent months. Uh, I was doing it quite a bit there for a little while and it has kind of fizzled out and I'll explain why here in a minute. Um, but the reason that I picked up my needles again is that Anne uh, Fiber Floss and Fiction returned to podcasting and she is nothing if not an inspiration to me when it comes to knitting and so I I had to I just I had to pick up my needles and I had to finally 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 finish the bind off on my three color cashmere shawl so this is a project that I started I think I cast on in 2016 and uh, I started it with a knit along with the Grocery Girls Knit podcast um, back when they were new. <laughs> so, you know, like that, that just tells you if you are in the knitting podcast world, then you know the significance maybe perhaps of that. Uh, and so I knit pretty well. And then when Baby Does Stuff was small, uh, when she was tiny, I was working on this section. This is a stockinette with a little with a little pearl bump pattern in it. Um, I was working on that while she snoozed. And then um, during December of last year, I was working on the lace panel. And then I hit the bind off and it is a Pico bind off and I don't love a Pico bind off. It takes forever. And there are, there were nearly 600 stitches here to bind off. So it took me forever. But I tell you what, uh, Ann P released her, her first, her first new video. And 
it was like that was like the catalyst that I needed because that night I sat down to knit the bind off and two hours later um, I got the second half of the bind off finished <laughs> yeah it took that long because I don't love a pico bind off and I did not do mine as frequently as Hohe called for this is a Hohe Locatelli pattern um, in case I didn't say that I didn't do it as frequently as she said I definitely did fewer picos than she called for but I ain't bothered. I mean, I'm really not bothered. I also stopped counting the space between them, so there's probably 10 stitches between a set and four. <laughs> Maybe not that few, but like this one looks short. This one does not. <laughs> but anyway, got it done. Pico's, Pico's done. So let me run through the yarns real quick. Uh, the blue steel gray and the hot pink are both Plucky Knitter Primo Fingering. They used to run a classic subscription, so every month you would get a yarn um, dyed based on movie classics. And so the pink is called CC Bloom, and the dark gray is called Poet's Corner. I have no idea if these are still available. This was years ago, a whole lot of years ago, and I think that Plucky Knitter has changed hands once or twice since then. So I have no idea if those colorways are still available, but that's what they are. The um, off-white neutral color is uh, Dreaming Color Smooshy with Cashmere in Crying Dove. Um, so all of these are a Merino Cashmere Nylon blend um, for maximum squish. Um, this thing is huge and it's gonna get even bigger once it's blocked but I have a knitting finish. I'm so geeked. I haven't finished a knit in, in a couple of years now. I don't think I've finished a knit since before I was pregnant. So it's been a while. Um, so anyway, so that is my, oh, it's very squishy. I need to get this blocked so I could wear it this cold season. So that is my three color cashmere shawl. So that lit a fire and I was like, okay, what next? What, what do I work on next? And I decided to work on something else squishy. And so I have put in quite a lot of time and effort into my Saugerties Shrug. This is by Jill Zielinski. It is a shrug. You cast on it this end and you knit and then you knit the body and then you, some people, it's charted that you knit up this way. Some people have actually started over and then um, and then joined the two pieces. Um, I'm still on the fence of what of what I'm going to do, but basically, the color work pattern will be opposite on the other side because the the V's of the knit stitches will go in the opposite direction. So I'm on the fence about what I might do. Uh, but anyway, so here's where I am now. I was in the color work section the last time you saw this, probably three years ago. Um, and I finished up the color work section. That was so much fun. I love knitting that color work. And then I started working on the body. Just rounds and rounds and rounds of... of Knit, knitting, just knitting, just knits. And then I separated for the, separated for the sleeves, kind of. So the way that this is gonna work is that here's the back and here is the part that will put it on my arm so you can see where the opening is. It's kind of, it's kind of like mid bicep. Um, with it with it down past my wrist and that's without blocking and whatnot um, so it might be it might be even closer to to my shoulder for the opening and uh, so yeah so now I'm just working the back back and forth now it's knits and pearls back and forth um, so some some mods that I did um, I made this section a couple rows longer than was charted um, I just I thought I needed a little bit more length to the actual sleeve part. 
And then I also added uh, some increases. So I did a knit front and back increase every other, or excuse me, every right side row of the of the back. So you can see that you can kind of see that that horizontal line right there. That's a knit front and back. It's not an invisible increase, um, but I increased it. I think I did that for 10 right side rows um, just to make the back a little bit longer because it has this tendency to curl. And so it was going to it was going to automatically curl a little bit. And so I just want it to be able to come down my back just a little bit further than was charted. So not a huge increase in number of stitches, but that's what 10 times 20 stitches increased. So I'll have to remember doing that so that I can repeat the uh, the effect on the other side, either in decreases if I'm going to go that route or increases if I'm going to join two pieces together at the back. As yet undecided. So uh, the yarns for this one, um, this neutral color is Malabrigo Rios in Sandbank. I love it. It's super, super squishy. And then my maroon here is Madeline Tosh Tosh Vintage in Heartbeat. Heartbeat. Yes, Heartbeat. Uh, and then my other sleeve is going to be an orange because that Virginia Tech life. Um, and that is also Madeline Tosh Tosh Vintage in The Fox, um, which is a nice dark orange. So I was enjoying the the stockinette back and forth. I was really enjoying that. I was it was great TV knitting. It was it was great knitting for when I was hanging out with the kiddo. Like if she's playing on the floor, I could I could get in a row or two. Um, but it was super easy to pick up and put down. No chart to follow. I'm just I'm just knitting back and forth forever now. Um, and I ran out of yarn. I ran out of yarn. So this is this is all I have left of this skein. No, I have a whole bunch of skeins, and um, and so I'm not I'm not out of yarn, but I can't find my ball winder and swift. I can't find them, <laughs> and I'm I'm barely dipping my toes back into knitting. That like I I need my stuff. <laughs> I need my stuff. So I yeah uh, I'm gonna need to find my ball winder and swift so that I can get some more yarn wound. The other thing is that with hand dyed yarn, uh, I remembered this about here, that I should be alternating skeins, and I haven't been, obviously. Um, so uh, hopefully I don't have a huge dye lot issue <laughs> when I switch skeins, and I will alternate from here on out. Like I said, once I find that ball winder in Swift, I'll wind them all up so that I'm ready to go. Ugh, silliness. So anyway, that's my Sagardy Shrug, and I'm going to inverse this so that you can see the back of color work because seeing those floats, that's just fun. It creates this double, almost double thickness of fabric. So the squish on this, I wish we had squish a vision. Um, it's, it's fantastic. This is going to be so good. So that is my shrug. So once I realized that I was out of yarn and um, needed to either tear apart my house to try to find my ball winder and swift because I haven't needed it since we moved here almost two years ago. Um, once I realized I was either going to have to do that or pick a new project, I've had decision fatigue and I've had a hard time picking what I want to work on next. So I must still be enough in the mood for Socrates that I need to tear apart my house and find my ball winder. So we'll see. We'll see um, when that when that comes to pass. Okay, let's switch over to books. Um, and I'm going to try to make this really brief because this video was supposed to be a half hour and that was a half hour ago. Uh, so books. I have two books to talk to you about. Um, and one of them is a recent finish. And that recent finish is Beach Read by Emily Henry. When I talked to y'all about books last time, I was in the midst of reading A Quick Amazie's uh, You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. 
and I misplaced it. It was, it was in one of the other bedrooms. Um, I went there to read one night when my husband was snoring. <laughs> um, so I, I snuck over to the other bedroom to read for a little bit. Uh, and I forgot that I had done that and I forgot that I had left it there. So I misplaced it. And so I was like, well, I need something to read. So I came down here and it was, it was right there on the shelf. And so I just grabbed it and I read through that pretty quickly. It was like, I think a week and a half, which is fast for me these days. Um, so it's a pretty quick read. Uh, it is a, it is a, an author that has been making the rounds on bookish social media, book talk, bookstagram, etc. Um, because the author, Emily Henry, recently released a new book. And so people have been comparing that one to uh, Beach Read, which I'm not sure was her debut, but pretty close to. Um, because everybody seemed to love Beach Read. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a, I thought it was a good read. Here's the thing. It is contemporary romance. And that's not my jam. It's great. It's great to read something light and not not super heavy. Um, not super dark. A lot of the things that I tend to pick to read are kind of dark. Just look at the shelves behind me. Um, but I, I just, I can't, I can't seem to sink my teeth into contemporary, into romance, into, into books like that. I can't, I can't seem to, to reach for that when I'm looking for a comfort read. Give me some more trauma. <laughs> um, I don't know what that says about me, but we'll move past that. Anyway, Beach Read was good and it was deeper than very surface level. It's called Beach Read and I think that that's kind of ironic. It's, I think that's more of an ironic title than um, than like, it, it's not it's not as fluffy <laughs> uh, as Beach Read might, might lead you to think. There, there are some things. The, the struggle I think that I had with it is that the main character and I couldn't connect. I couldn't, I just couldn't connect with her. Uh, she and I are just very, very different, <laughs> um, both in life circumstances and in, uh, just, um, just the way we approach things. The one thing that that book did to me though, is it made me want to pursue writing again. Uh, I haven't yet put pen to paper or keys to keyboard, uh, or excuse me, fingers to the keyboard, but it, because the main characters are authors, it has kind of re-sparked this desire to write again. And so if I seem to find time in my days, <laughs> which sounds absurd after talking about all of this, but, <laughs> um, I, yeah, it just, it, it really reinvigorated, uh, the idea of writing for me. So that was, that was pretty cool. I like reading from the perspective of authors in a, in a novel setting, not necessarily in a memoir of an author, but in a, in a novel setting, in a, in a fiction setting. So, so that was Beach Read. I don't have it here with me, um, because I lent it to my mom. My mom is somebody who is like, okay, I'm going to go read before bed. And she reads about three sentences and then falls asleep. Um, so I can't give her, I can't recommend anything super super heavy for her because she won't remember. <laughs> She'll spend a week reading the same three sentences. So, um, so I got to give her something lighter and she might like that. Uh, it does take place in Michigan. The main characters went to U of M. So, you know, that kind of, it's like an extra gold star right there. Excuse me, an extra maze star. Okay. Uh, so I finished that. And I have had a hard time getting back into You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. And so I decided to pick up something that wasn't contemporary, uh, that wasn't romance, that was more in my quote unquote wheelhouse. Um, and that is the most recent book that I purchased. I have so many books here, but I decided to pick this one up. This is called These Hollow Vows, and it is by Lexi Ryan, who is a best selling author for romance. She is a, she's a steamy, steamy romance writer. She's a spicy romance writer. Um, this is her 
young adult fantasy debut. And this came across my, this came across my uh, desk, so to speak, my proverbial desk, um, because the publisher is HMH. I don't think I follow them on Instagram. The sequel to this book came out recently. The second in this, I think it's just a duology. And the second book came out recently and it popped up on my Instagram. And honestly, it was the author that really sparked in me. If you guys watch Sammy J. Stitches, you know her kids' names. <laughs> um, so, so I was immediately intrigued. And so I, I ordered this first book in the series. Um, it's said that this ends on quite a cliffhanger. And so with the second book out now, like I can have, if, if the cliffhanger is like, oh, uh, then I can immediately dive into this, into the sequel. Um, and so I ordered it and I told Sammy that I would, that I would give this to her once I'm finished with it. So it is, I'm about hundred pages in and it moves so fast. It is super, super fast paced. So much so that I think that the author is trying to get to something. She's trying to get the story to something and she has a lot to throw at you at the, at the, at the jump. So this is fantasy. Um, and we have our main character, Abriella, who is human. Um, and there are, there are magical creatures abound. Um, there are magical creatures in the human world, but then there is also the fairy world that is connected to uh, the human world, but they aren't, they aren't like enmeshed. So the prince of the summer court has decided it's time to get married. And there is a ton of money available to, um, there's a ton of money available to whoever becomes his bride. Their family will basically be set up for life. Humans are barely scraping out a living. Uh, and so there are droves of young women who would like to marry the Summer Prince. Um, and then of course there's the Unseelie Court and so we have typical expected kind of fairy dynamics going on here. Abriella finds herself um, as one of the um, as one of the women who is vying for the prince's hand um, because of circumstances, things happen that force her to go into the fairyland. So I think that Lexi Ryan was heavily influenced by Sarah J. Maas um, and Throne of Glass. Um, heavily influenced by that because there are some, there are some similarities between Abriella and Farah. No, not Farah. What's her name? Selena. There are a ton of similarities between Abriella and Selena, just in mannerisms and in and in um, um, grit and uh, drive and ambition. Um, so, so there's that influence. As you can see on the cover, there's a bit of a love triangle developing here. We have. A, uh, we have a romance writer here, so things are probably going to get spicy. Um, they kind of already have in places. Um, not not totally spicy, but anyway. Um, so there's there's that influence, and there's also Vicky reading and stitching. I hope you're paying attention here. Um, there's also a lot of Cinderella influence. So there's there's kind of a Cinderella aspect going on. Really, there seems to be a little bit of all of the Major Grimm's fairy tales influence here. So there's there's some Beauty and the Beast, and there's some Cinderella, and there's maybe some Sleeping Beauty, and um, there's even a little bit of uh, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe going on. Uh, so it's it's kind of interesting to read a young adult fantasy from the perspective of an adult romance writer um, and to see 
how she has been influenced. Like I said, it has moved so fast. Um, I, I, I'm getting a little bit of whiplash. I'm not really able to settle in and to really understand this world because it is moving so fast. Um, so I'm hoping it's going to slow down a little bit. Um, it's definitely a page turner because of that, but um, yeah. So anyway, that is These Hollow Vows and I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. So that is it for the books. That is that is what I'm currently reading. I hope to get back to You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty here pretty soon. I have some other things on these shelves that are calling to me. Um, I know that R.F. Quang came out with Babel recently that everybody's buzzing about. Um, and I have the Gideon books. Um, there's lots of things that are that are on my radar, but there is not enough time in the day for it all. Um, so anyway, so that is it for me today. I think I have talked enough. I appreciate you all so much, especially if you stayed here to the to the bitter end. Thank you very much for hanging with me and for for letting me drone on and on about these things that that occupy my time, my my me time, so to speak. All right, I'm going to head off. I'm going to get editing and get some lunch. I wish you all happy stitching. Stay safe, stay healthy. As always, be kind. And I will see you in the next one. Maybe in a couple weeks, maybe longer. I don't know. Bye for now.